Coming up in today's episode, the Irish weather starts to take its toll. Can't feel my fingers, Jesus. <laughs> that is cold. A tabletop gets vacuumed. And some more classic songs get butchered. Red, gold and green. Come, 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 So evening guys, uh, I'm going to start today's episode with a quick overview of this. This is the hydraulic fluid filter housing which is located on the mid left of the engine bay. And as you would expect, it houses the actual hydraulic fluid filter. Now it's just this, it's a circular kind of one and a half inch tall resin paper based filter, a cheap filter. Um, and I wanted to get a replacement for this. Uh, the problem is these are NLA or no longer available from BMW, they no longer manufacture them. Um, so I actually got lucky and I found one on Ivo Kristoff. Uh, he is a uh, retailer in the Netherlands and he provides lots of parts for E28s. And it just so happens that the E28 filter is exactly the same as the BMW one for BMW one, the one for the M70 V12. So this is the new filter. And I'd say these are ordinarily maybe 10 euro when they were available. This cost me 65 euro for a paper filter. Um, which is kind of crazy. Does it need replacing? I don't know. Um, is this clogged up? Probably not. It probably would do the job, but I just wanted a new filter. I'm doing this right first time around, so I got a new one. Um, it's absolutely crucial all of these parts are in the right order. If they're not in the right order, the fluid basically gets in and around the filter. Um, it goes under, it goes over, it kind of pulls in the middle or just bypasses the filter completely and the filter housing doesn't do its job at all. It doesn't filter the fluid, which is utterly pointless. Um, so to start with, both of these gaskets were missing. I got these from BMW and these are thankfully still available. And they, the job of these is basically to clamp the top and bottom of the filter. And that seals it against the, the rest of the assembly and stops fluid from uh, leaking in and around. It actually forces fluid through the filter, which is the, the main idea. So I got my filter, got my seals. And when I took this apart, Loads of these parts are in the wrong order as well, which is very, very common. You get mechanics taking this apart and, uh, you know, trying to clean it out or replace the filter or whatever, and they don't put it back in the right order. So it's extremely important these go back in the right order, which I'm about to do right now. And yeah, I'm going to get started on that right now. So the first part of the reassembly is getting these seals straight onto the filter. As I mentioned, they do just basically clip onto the top and bottom of the filter. So that's the bottom one on nice and flat. Still some powder on the seals here. And they clip on nicely like that. So this now seals against the bottom of the oil filter housing. So that just drops in. I want to just make sure that these are still flat. They are. I shouldn't throw it in so hard. So I'm just going to drop it in there. I'm just going to center it. Then this piece, now it's got this flange on it and you would ordinarily think that goes down over the filter like that, but it doesn't. It actually sits flat against the seal, against that black gasket that I'm after just inserting. So that drops down. And make sure everything's nice and centered. Then you've got your washer and that uh, basically spreads the load of the spring across that piece. The spring now drops down and I have the C-clip. Now the function of this C-clip is to, you need to compress the spring ever so slightly and then obviously that snaps onto the actual threaded bar here. So this can be a little bit fiddly. Okay, I actually had to do that bit off camera because getting the clip on is really quite tough. The easiest way I find to do it is to slide the spring on, put the clip on up here, then push the clip all the way down with a flathead screwdriver, just keep push, pushing, pushing until it clips in and it clicks into place. So you can see there now that it is now in, in the correct location. Uh, we now insert our larger mesh filter that goes on top. We have our next spring. Then we have our washer, again to distribute the load across this large mesh. So the mesh gets inserted. That's now spring-loaded. 
this collar gets inserted and then we can put on the two nuts. Now there is a correct height for this mesh, which I will just have to look up. But once the two of these are on, that's the job otherwise complete. So there is a seal here as well. The seal on this is perfectly good, so I'm leaving that as it is. It's still nice and supple. And then that reinserts. And then you've got this kind of brass uh, threaded sleeve which screws down. Okay, so the next task at hand is basically this whole tray which sits below the radiator itself. Um, I need to basically clean it up. As you can see, there's a lot of surface rust on it. And I'm just gonna strip this right back to the bare metal. I'm gonna use uh, my angle grinder with the knotted wheel. And it should make light work of it. And then once I have all that stripped off, I'm going to apply a rust inhibitor and that should provide me with a nice paintable surface that I can prime up and um, I'm just going to maybe spray it black maybe just to get it nice and clean so um, yeah so hopefully this lifts pretty easily I'm about to find out So I just finished with the grinder and I'm really impressed with how it came out. Uh, the whole tray has actually cleaned up incredibly well as you can see. Um, there is some discoloration here because there was some heavy surface rust and there certainly is some pitting. There's no doubt about that. You can certainly see it throughout. Um, and for example here this hole has obviously just got larger and larger. But by and large this will all just treat quite well. Um, I've ground all this down as well. There's a bit of surface rust here on the edges on the corners of these mounts. Same on the other side as well, but that's come up actually really, really better than expected to be honest. In here as well, came up better than expected. Now this is really quite bad. You can see the level of rust there on that uh, actual washer, but that was all the way around here. That cleaned up really well. This is basically all black here. You can't see it in shadow, but... Um, and what I've done up here is... I basically grind back uh, the whole tower here, the bottom of the tower, you can see there's a lot of pitting there. Um, now again, I'll just treat that, hopefully that will uh, recover pretty well. If it doesn't, I'm just going to cut it out, and that's basically what I've done over here. I've cut out a whole section, which was basically just rust. Um, obviously water and dirt just sits in that corner, and the whole thing just disintegrates. I've ground down here as well, there's a bit of surface rust there, and obviously this uh, section here where one of the, um, there's basically, uh, I thought there was four, there's actually only two screws here, um, but basically that holds in a plastic frame behind it, um, and I'm actually going to cut that out as well and get that sorted too, so I'm going to get this treated now, just going to use some standard uh, KU rust, um, and I'm going to just apply that now with a paintbrush. Well, that's a hell of a reaction. Look at that. That's only literally, what's that? Three, four minutes. And you can see it starts to turn black, purple, um, and starts to neutralize the rust pretty much straight away. So uh, again, this is only for surface rust. If there's any level of depth of rust at all, it has to be cut out. So it's fine for this kind of application um, and for down here, but obviously in here, this still needs heavy work and I still need to cut out any bad sections in here. So. Uh, I'm not kind of, uh, you know, glossing over the fact that there's some heavy rust in some areas and the only way to treat it is to cut it out and weld in a new section. So, but as you can see, it's starting to react up here as well, down there too. Um, so I'm going to leave that for probably about an hour in total. I'm going to apply it again and then wipe it all off and sand and prime it all down. This is the end result three hours later. As you can see, everything has turned kind of like a purpley black and the materials reacted very well with this and um, with the surface rust that was here so uh, it's left a lovely smooth finish for painting and uh, whilst it looks rotten dirty i'm after degreasing this entire thing so that's all completely clean ready for painting i've started just kind of masking the area off with plastic and the same in here as you can see a lot of the area in there has turned jet black as well so um, but like i say all this is clean looks like it's dirty but it's not um, and the primer should give it a nice protective coating for years to come. So I'll get started on that now. And that's the primer applied. 
which has made a massive difference. The whole tray looks like it's essentially brand new. And it's funny how close the primer is to the actual original colour as well. It actually brightens up the whole engine base. So um, I've done the same over on this side. Cleaned it up nicely. Um, so I may actually still put a top coat on this as well. So uh, I'll see how things go. So yeah, for now, that has cleaned things up immensely. So I'm moving back to this side of the engine. And I just need to remove these seals so I can get my brake fluid reservoir back in. These are the old seals. And I have two new seals. Nice. Okay, with the seals in, I can now reinstall my brake fluid reservoir. So this is the original reservoir, as you can see. And I was thinking of actually replacing this purely for aesthetic reasons. It's perfectly durable. There's nothing wrong with it at all. What I actually did was bleach it in a uh, dilution of bleach in direct sunlight for about four or five days and it actually whitened quite considerably. See here, this is pretty much the color that the whole reservoir was. So it actually came up pretty well. It's actually not too bad at all. So I'm just going to reuse that. Um, pretty much the whole front top area is white, so for aesthetic reasons, it actually looks the part now, so I'll get this reinstalled as well. And we have another original part. This is the actual fluid level sensor. As you can see, it's a fair bit whiter. <laughs> But it's good to get the new part installed. Now this is one of the biggest worries I have about this entire refurbishment of the engine bay. All the wiring is actually very hard and quite brittle. And for example, this connector here was lying on the ground for pretty much the last month and I actually had no idea where it came from. It's now apparent to me that this is where it came from. This is the actual brake fluid level sensor. Um, and this is the actual connection here, as you can see, uh, the actual colour of the cables match up. So it was this that fell off. I mean, the cables just literally sheared in half. Um, I am quite good at soldering, so it shouldn't be a problem to get this back on. But there's some instances around the car where connectors have basically uh, broken here. So I may have to chop it off entirely and replace them with new connectors, either OEM connectors or I might use my own uh, electrical connections either. So that's where that's from. And... Yep, it's on the floor again, but I'm going to have to get that replaced um, or fixed anyway, which shouldn't be too big of a job. There's plenty of excess cable here, so it's a pretty easy solder job. I can move on to getting all these items reconnected now. So this is part of the main power harness. That can be reconnected. And I have both of these connections here as well, which connect onto this. So this is the hydraulic fluid pressure regulator uh, it's a large uh, manifold essentially uh, with two sensors plugged into it there's a large heavy piece and i've actually uh, resprayed this i covered off or masked off all the actual ports connections all the brass pieces and sprayed it black just to clean it up a bit so i've got the sensors back in and now i can mount them back on this bracket so there's two bolts that hold this on and i actually sprayed this bracket as well to clean it up a bit so i primed it and spray the black. And now I can get both of these sensors reconnected with both of these wire harnesses. I'm not sure if the polarity of these actually matters, but I did mark them. I put a black mark on the prong uh, to match up with the black sheeted connector. So let's see if I can get these back on without damaging them. That was surprisingly straightforward. Might clean them up a bit. I'm just going to snug down these connectors. That should do that. And that should do that. Okay, so I have my wires set up here. They're both already joined loosely. And now I'm just going to solder them together. There we go, we're eventually getting there.
Right, so I'm back out in the shed now with the filter housing. I've got two old lines connected here because I'm trying just to determine which one of these is which. Uh, it's obviously important that I find out which one is which because uh, they're in a specific orientation for a reason. So uh, I figured that out and I've got some new lines here as well. As you can see, I've got a brand new kind of elbow fitting here. Um, I've got two new sealer rings, new banjo bolt. Actually, no, that's the original banjo bolt. Nothing wrong with that. I've got a new line here as well. Uh, that's the original, absolutely rock solid. And this is the new bendy one. Um, new line there as well. And there's a total of six fittings on this. Um, and like I mentioned, there's two more here. I've got another one here um, that connects up to the underside of the housing. And the last one is this one here. Um, and I've also put the correct fitting on here. Somebody had a, a horrific hose clamp on there. So I replaced that with the correct one as well. So I'm gonna get this into the car. So the first thing I want to do is get my hose clamps on. I'm going to slide two of them on here. And two of them on here as well. And these are the pinch style hose clamps as well. And the idea behind these is they give a perfect amount of inward pressure all the way around. Whereas a traditional hose clamp where the actual nut is, you tend not to have a good contact with the hose. So the difference with these is when they're pinched, it actually pinches on the entire hose. And these are the original factory clamps. God, this is tight. Now I can connect this line. That's pretty easy. And tight. Ah. Nice. Let's get this seated. Like that. So this can now actually go into the pressure regulator here. Perfect. And last but not least, this is the main line that actually connects the reservoir down to the power steering pump. So you've got a protective cap on both ends. They both come off. And hopefully this goes on without too much trouble. But obviously I'm gonna need a hose clamp first. Right, that's finally on. So let's get the hose clamp in place. <sighs> Done. And there's two collars here that actually just slide over these threaded bolts here. And these center the housing on the actual frame itself. And finally we have our washers and our nuts to clamp the whole thing down. Another job done. Sweet, so that's everything reconnected, uh, hydraulic wise anyway. 
it feels so good to have all that reconnected. So the actual uh, pressure regulator manifold there, all that's connected. Got some new lines, new lines as well coming from the uh, compressor at the back. And we've got new lines here at the front as well. All new hose clamps and of course the new connection onto the power steering pump as well. So reservoir looks brand new as well. As you can see, I sprayed that several episodes back. Looks brand new. So we shouldn't have any more leaks in this area. Delighted with that. Okay, so before I can get the actual oil filter housing installed back in this location, I want to get this bracket reattached. Uh, so this was basically broken, uh, there's a crack right across it. I need to get this welded back in place. I make no claims to being a welder or being in any way good at it. I spent about 15 minutes doing some test runs with a, a basic welder I picked up. I'm just going to do two spots and then um, just run a bead across the center. And I think that should be more than strong enough. Even the two spots alone, the two, two tacks should hold it in place. But Let's see how it goes anyway. Absolutely shocking, but that'll do the job. Yeah, so as I mentioned, zero welding skills, an absolutely diabolical job as you can see, but it is more than sufficient for what this bracket needs to do. I think it actually holds part of the ignition system if I remember correctly, and uh, so it's absolutely not a structural part, and it is rock solid, you can swing out of that. So. Um, I'm gonna clean it up a wee bit, um, prime it, get it sprayed. I actually have some of the actual um, glacier blue on the way so this is going to be sprayed up and it should look brand new I'm going to get the oil filter housing in now just to get it temporarily mounted so I can get all the lines and everything reconnected and I'll do this at a, at a slightly later date but it's good to have that out of the way uh, and it gives me well I needed the room to do it so that's why I did it now so let's get this oil filter housing back in okay so oil filter housing this should go back in pretty easily there's only three connections on it there's an inlet and an outlet both of these lead straight into the engine block and you have a threaded connection here which actually goes to the sump um, so these are the two main oil lines and um, these are actually quite expensive and there's nothing wrong with these at all so i just cleaned them up refurbished them and um, but i do have four brand new o-rings to replace these um, so i'll be doing that i have this new hose here uh, which will be replacing this old decrepit one, there's a hell of a leak on this bottom one going into the sump. Uh, and of course I've got a brand new original BMW oil filter as well, so with a new uh, sealer for the top cap as well. Um, the funny thing is, for the longest time I've been trying to figure out why on earth this is the way the, the car was previously. It basically rests on top of those hydraulic lines. And I was trying to figure out what on earth is going on here, this should be sitting higher surely. And sure enough, looking, looking at real OEM, they're supposed to be these rubber boots uh, so or spacers or such these basically thread straight into this bracket and they lift the entire uh, oil filter housing away from the car itself so uh, apparently these are a regular failure item because uh, there's a lot of strain you know as you might imagine when you're trying to get the actual oil cap off um, there's a lot of twisting force there and these have a tendency to break so people are replacing these quite often but anyway that's where it's supposed to be sitting clears all the lines underneath uh, and I'm going to get these secured now and get all these lines connected up <laughs> so that's where it should be Okay, so I've got my new O-rings on, they're the old ones there, and I've actually oiled them up as well. And I was just consulting uh, my old pictures and diagrams just to see the orientation of these, and they seem to connect like that. With the smaller one on the left side, and the larger one on the right hand side. So that's how they connect. So with the oil on the O-rings, they should go in fairly easily. I remember they were an absolute nightmare to get out. There we go. Yep. That one is in as well. 
and then this plate installs over the two of them and keeps them tight in place. So I'm not sure what the exact angle these are supposed to be yet. I'm just going to hand tighten this down and get it started. Okay, that's nice and tight. And this, this is the line that leads to the sump. And this connects on something like this. Maybe like this, but I don't think so. I think it's like this. And there should be a banjo bolt here somewhere. Yes, there is. And that's what connects it on. And there should be a washer either side of this as well. To start with, I'm just gonna rub some fresh oil around these ports just to make insertion of the pipes actually that bit easier. Here comes the housing. Okay. Come on, Ratchet. Come on. There we go. I'm actually going to backtrack and spray this now while I still can. Now, once I actually have this filter housing mounted, I can actually see that it's like a floating design. I think that's how it's supposed to be. It's actually not attached to anything at the bottom. These steel braided lines here are so rigid, I mean, they're rock solid, that the actual bottom of the filter housing isn't attached to anything, it kind of floats there, and it's just mounted at these two points. So it's a pretty interesting design. And the last thing to get connected up is this line that leads to the sump. There's a protective cap on the end of it. If I can get that off. If that presses down. Now, as far as I'm aware, the correct screws for these are a combined kind of nut and washer as one piece. Um, but these were installed here previously, so I'm just going to reuse them. Two washers and two nuts, which is essentially the same thing. Nice. Then we have our new filter. And I've got my oil filter housing lid with the new O-ring on it, uh, which is lubed up with some fresh oil. Uh, I'm just gonna screw this on lightly. I'm not gonna screw it all the way down because this still has to be pre-charged with some oil. And I don't wanna do that now because it's just gonna run through the lines and straight onto the ground because the sump pan is missing. So for now, this can just rest on the top and I can call that another job done. And nearly forgot. So just another quick shout out to JKC BMW in Northern Ireland who have been supplying me with all of my OEM parts for this project at extremely reasonable prices. If the guys have the parts in stock, I have them pretty much the next working day, which is fantastic service. I've gone pretty much OEM with every single part on this project. It's gonna to stand to the quality of the car once it's done. I know the parts are gonna fit. And like I say, I know the quality is gonna be there as well. So if you need anything at all, JKC BMW, give the guys a shout, they're great to deal with. So today is going to be a bit of an interesting project. What I have here is the original hydraulic cooler, which you probably all remember from the previous episode. So this sits in the front of the engine bay and it cools the hydraulic fluid. So as you can see, and I think I pointed it out before, this has the original March 1991 build date and it is in absolutely terrible condition. Um, all these cooling fins have basically fallen off. Uh, but that is essentially all that's wrong with this cooler. Um, it's an incredibly basic device. Your fluid basically comes in, passes through it. It's one continuous channel and then exits out the other hose here. So it's a very basic device. Uh, I priced one of these and I would like to replace it, but it's a 500 euro part, at least 500 euro if I recall correctly. 
which is a pure waste to throw this out seeing as it's such a simple device and essentially all that's wrong with it is it's a bit on the dirty side and all these cooling fins are falling off so my plan is to remove these entirely pull all them off and uh, clean up the mating surface here so it's nice and flat gives me a good contact surface for these so i've got myself bucket loads of these heat sinks these are designed for uh, integrated circuit boards, uh, graphics cards, all that kind of stuff, Raspberry Pis, and they're small uh, aluminium heat sinks. And I've so many sizes available on Amazon, but I got the correct size basically. So I'm going to sit these straight on here, and I'm going to uh, thermal cement them straight onto the surface. I'm going to have them lined up, and it'll be just as effective, potentially even more effective. And uh, then the cooling fins are actually cooling the hydraulic fluid. So once they're all in place, cemented, uh, nice and cured, I think it takes about 12, 24 hours to cure properly. I'm going to spray the whole thing and it should be as good as new. So replace these hoses as well. Um, and yeah, so these heat sinks, they only cost me about 50, 60 euro for that entire amount. I think I have about over 100 of them. And um, so I'm going to get started on this and I've, I think I've saved myself a good bit of money. Mm. Fucking kidding me. Okay, so this is the final product. As you can see, I've got all the heatsinks now applied. They came out pretty damn well. I actually put this heatsink on the bottom just as a test, just to make sure that it actually is a nice strong bond. And as you can see, it's, I've almost a kilo of a radiator hanging out of a single heatsink, so it's nice and strong. So all I want to do is just clean this up. As you can see, there's a lot of uh, exposed aluminium there. I'm just going to give it a spray with some spray paint, and it should be as good as new. And this is how the cooler turned out. Absolutely delighted with how it turned out. Uh, I wouldn't go as far as to say it looks factory, but it's a marked improvement on how it was. And I saved myself a significant amount of money. And like I mentioned earlier, I hate to throw out parts that are, you know, 90% functional or can be made to work again. So I saved myself some money in the process. So we'll get this back into the car. It actually mounts on just those two studs there, and a third stud over there. And you just need to pass the two lines through the actual frame and then line up the screw holes like that. And these three nuts hold it in place and I get them into place now. So I have the hydraulic cooler installed, all three bolts are tightened up and I have two brand new hoses as well with the original BMW clips as well. So we'll have no leaks in this area ever again, fingers crossed. Okay, so I'm moving back to the underside of the engine. Uh, reason being, I want to get the oil pan back on. But before I do that, I want to adjust this. Uh, I mentioned it before. This is the actual chain that links the oil pump to the crank. And there is an allowable amount of deflection on this chain. It's 10 millimeters as far as I'm aware. But that seems like a lot more than 10 millimeter, 10 millimeters. So... Uh, the way that you adjust this is through a Allen bolt, which is actually hidden behind uh, this bolt. So I've already loosened it off with a ratchet. I can remove this. And that exposes um, the Allen uh, screw, which is further up. So as you can see here, I'll just demonstrate this if I can get the Allen in with one hand. So once it's all the way in, as I turn it clockwise, you'll see the amount of slack in the chain changes. So that's nice and tight now, and the chain is nice and tight. Um, now there is a way of doing this, if you've got some uh, calipers for example, you can measure the actual amount of deflection, 
uh, there's no way I can do this one handed so I'm going to do this off camera uh, and get this adjusted to the correct amount of deflection so it's I mean you can almost do it by eye essentially uh, you can you know mark a, a, a fixed point on the actual inside of the block here and then just measure how much it's deflecting in relation to that mark so at the moment that's deflecting but maybe two or three millimeters and uh, so I want to get that bang on so I'll do that now Okay, I have the bolt back in, I have the chain fully adjusted, and I'm now happy with the amount of uh, slack that's in the chain. Uh, so, yeah, happy with that level of deflection. And whilst I have this open, I thought I'd just show you the state of the cylinder walls. Uh, and they look absolutely brand new. Absolutely delighted when I look closely at these and how good they were. Let me see if I can zoom in a bit. Um, this is an engine with 133,000 miles, as far as I'm aware. That's one cylinder wall. Let's see if I can get the other one here. And that's the other one. Like new. Brilliant. Okay, so I grabbed my refurbished oil pan from the shelf. Um, I've degreased the entire gasket surface here. The whole thing looks uh, nice and shiny. And obviously the whole interior has been cleaned as well. I have my brand new original OEM gasket, which has a delightful fishy smell. And I'm going to do, as per what a few other YouTubers have done, is basically zip tie this into place to stop it from coming loose while I'm actually trying to offer it up to the bottom of the engine. So I'm going to zip tie this in place. I have uh, one or two new spare bolts just in case I need them. And I have a new oil level sensor o-ring as well. That's the oil level sensor which pops up through this hole here. Um, so I've got a new seal for that as well. So I'm going to get this centered and then I'm going to put it back on the engine. Right, and I'm going to put the oil level sensor back on once this is actually attached because it's just going to add extra weight and make it even more difficult for me to get it into place. Ooh. Well time to the face. install the oil level sensor. With the new o-ring I might add. And last but not least, the drain plug with a new crush washer installed. Job done. Okay, before I move on to anything else, I still have to reinstall this. So this is the reusable metal mesh filter and it actually installs here. It's part of the power steering system. So it actually sits inside this brass cap and it installs, it's a kind of spring loaded and that reinstalls on the other side of, of this mounting here, which is located alongside the sump. Big heavy unit. But once it's back in place, that's pretty much all the hydraulics done for now. I'll just tighten that down with a wrench. Okay, so I'm moving back over to this area of the engine where I'm going to be reinstalling the AC compressor. And before I can do that, I need to reinstall this, which is the AC compressor mount. So I have my 13 mil bolts all inserted already. So I'm just gonna mount it on the side of the engine and get all these bolts tightened down. Done. 
Right, so I can move on to getting the new aircon compressor installed. This is the brand new shiny Denso unit that I referenced a few episodes back. And just before I get it installed, I'll just show you these. These are the brand new uh, OEM O-rings that are going to replace basically every O-ring in every junction um, in the actual AC line, basically. So, for example, you've got an O-ring that sits on there and on there. Uh, I've got another aircon line here as well. Uh, so that's where the O-rings sit, basically, at the end, at each end of the line, basically. But what I've noticed is the O-rings that supposedly installed here, according to really OEM, are these o-rings here but these are much too small so what i'm actually going to do is where have i, I seem to have mislaid it these are the actual stoppers that came with the aircon compressor just for us as in you know transit um and these are a larger o-ring and that's the one i'm going to use because i actually just did a test fit of these ones on the end of the line basically and it's just kind of flopping about on the end of the line so it makes much more sense to actually use these ones here so i'm going to install this one on the end of this line because that's the one that connects uh, to the back connector here and then the front connection is made by this permanent line that's here on the right side of the engine bay uh, so two of those lines will connect to the side of the ac compressor once it's actually in place which i'm going to do now right let's get this bad boy in make sure all the holes line up with each other That's it. And I've got my heat shield sprayed here as well, so it looks brand new. Um, so I just have to get the four bolts installed, and then I can connect up the two lines. So I just want to get these finger tight first. That's all four done. So I'm just feeding this front line that leads to the condenser into the back port on the compressor. If I can just get it to line up, that would be great. Okay, there we go. And the bolt does a lot of the work here. Once you actually have it seated properly, the bolt pulls it all together. So I'm just going to get that loosely tightened and do the same for this one. I can't feel my fingers, Jesus. <laughs> that is cold. I'm sure there's probably aircon guys out there saying you shouldn't use a ratchet on these joints. I don't know. If that's true or not but there we go that's hand tight with the allen key and it's perfectly flush let me just check it from the other side as well yep perfect and just while i've got access to it i've just removed this this is the earth cable that basically sits down here and connects the block onto the actual chassis itself and as you can see the cable is absolutely destroyed that's the original kind of brown sheath that used to be on it and I actually thought I might be able to salvage this and clean it up, but it's in absolute tatters, as you can see. Way too far gone. So I've replaced it with this uh, much higher quality, uh, heavier duty cable. As you can see, it's copper core all the way through. Uh, it's a little bit longer than the original one, uh, but I should be able to make it fit, kind of bend back on itself. So I'm going to get this installed now. And it went on perfectly. Uh, it's bent up on itself a little bit as you can see but it screws onto the chassis perfect and it actually fits perfectly down in there as well so yeah that's a good fit and it doesn't impinge on anything either so it should be nicely out of the way tucked there so very happy with that okay doc so it's a fresh new day well fresh new evening and what i want to do is replace this and um, you probably all remember this is the original ac dryer it kind of sits underneath the front right headlight down here and that's where it was so a mixture of rust and dirt and filth and um, there's absolutely no way this was working in the last five years or so as you can take a look at that absolutely shocking condition and um, there's no way it was functioning as it should have um, and rusted through on the mounts as well so that needs to be replaced thrown in the bin straight away apart from these these plastic clips need to be transferred over onto this the brand new one 
so this is a, an original burr uh, dryer and this is where the clips need to be installed. Uh, this is a, an original uh, pressure sensor of some kind. I presume it's a pressure sensor because there's an actual valve in there. So it must regulate or read the actual pressure of the dryer. Um, so yeah, these connections, they've all been cleaned up. Um, they look brand new now. They looked absolutely diabolical when I took it out. And I need to get it seated and the new lines connected as well. So this is the kind of orientation it needs to be in. Those two screw holes line up and it just kind of sits in there and this line here connects to it and then the line that leads to the condenser connects to it as well. The O-rings just like on the compressor need to be replaced. As you saw there I have both of them connected now um, and these need to be replaced as well. So I'm going to get on that now. In regards to this area here which I was talking about before with the rust on the tower, I'm actually going to tackle that from the underside. It makes way more sense to get the wheel off when I have the suspension out. Take the plastic cover on and then weld on a new section, new little strips basically. Um, instead of trying to do it here with all this wiring and mess in the way. So it's just too difficult to get at. So, so I'll get this installed and that'll allow me to get all of the components back installed. Uh, and we can go from there. I now have the plastic clip installed, transferred over as you can see. The cables are nicely rooted out of the way. And I forgot there's actually an additional clip that gets installed as well, which is located here. That actually attaches it to uh, the side body basically to, if I can point to it, where is it? There it is. So it actually attaches there as well as to the two screw holes there as well. So let me get this in position. I'll get my two wires connected and I can tighten down the bolts. Right, so I'm just going to get this o-ring off. This needs a bit of a clean up. Another new O-ring. There we go. Okay, I'm doing yet more backtracking here. I'm actually going to replace the pressure switch on the dryer. Um, the original one, it looks like there's a bit of corrosion on the inside. It's likely the original one. So I'm going to swap this out now as well. Done. Okay, so I'm moving on to this, which is the AC condenser, of course, and it's got the old fan attached. So I have a brand new condenser, which I'll show you now. Oh, here's the new condenser. And as you can see, it's got the same mounting points on it. There's one on the bottom here as well. And all of them line up perfectly with these mount points here. And um, so I can transfer the fan over and then get it installed into the car. Right, you know what? I'm just going to scrap all this. This is binding. It's probably 30 years old. This is probably 30 years old. Let's get rid of it. And one new fan. Let's get this open. Ooh, very fancy. Now, just to make sure this all orients the same way as the original. I'm just staring at the original on the floor and I think it mounts like this and you get all new bushes as well and new bolts too thank god because all the originals were all rusted Number two. Ah, number three. Come on, there we go. Ah, 
Okay. All right. That's it all assembled. There's that characteristic winding down noise. <laughs> okay, so just before I drop this in, it's actually worth noting that for some reason the O-ring on this connection is much larger than it is on this one, so make sure you've got the two different sizes for it. Um, in terms of where this actually mounts, you've got this kind of uh, ridged piece of metal along the bottom. So as you can see, there's kind of like a, a valley in the middle there. And that sits down on top of these two rubber stoppers here, so that's where it's going to sit. Always make sure you put it in the right way around. That normally helps. <laughs> okay. So I have the O-rings installed. Gonna position that on top of the rubber stoppers, which it now is. Both of these connections here are lining up, so I should be able to get my screws back in. And now I just need to reconnect my compressor connections here. That's one and two. Two. They look like good solid connections. Oh yes, perfectly sealed. Now I'll just get these screws installed. That's not going anywhere. Right, okay, I'm gonna leave the video there. I'm exhausted. And I know I said in the last video that this engine would be running before the cool set in, before the winter set in. Remember I said this. I really wanna get this engine finished now in the next few weeks. Um, it's gonna get start getting very cool here in Ireland now. It's We're talking mid end September. So I really wanna have the engine up and running before it starts getting very cold. Yeah, so that was a load of bullshit. Um, I'll just show you what I have left to do. Intake manifolds. I've got intake manifold gaskets. They go back on relatively easily. Um, I've just got the fan shroud here. I have a new shroud. I have a new fan. I have a new fan clutch. I have a new expansion bottle, new coolant hoses. So all that stuff can go on in an hour or two. That doesn't take long at all. Radiator as well. Air boxes, MAFs. Um, and then the fuel injection has to be sorted, so uh, the actual fuel lines, fuel rails, I have all new injectors, so I was going to refurbish them, I'm not going to do that, I'm just going to put all new injectors in, I've got all new leads, and then I have a completely refurbished alternator, which I sent off for repair, I'll cover that in the next video, new water pumps going in, new tensioners, new belts, and uh, obviously the crank has to go back in, uh, sorry, the balancer, um, and then all the miscellaneous bits, headlights can go back in last as well. So all that will be done in the next video. And I swear on my life, next video, there's going to be a bit more of this.